Hello, my name is Jen Bauer. My pronouns are she, her, and my colleague Adam and I are collection managers at the University of Michigan Museum of Paleontology. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the ways that we and the museum have increased accessibility to our specimens and resources. Before diving into the content, I would like to acknowledge that our museum and university are located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe people. In 1817, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations were removed from their land through the treaty at the foot of the rapids, with the promises that their children could be educated at the university that would be built. However, much of the original land that was taken was sold upon relocating to Ann Arbor, and there is no record of any indigenous students being educated at U of M for 130 years following the treaty. Despite centuries of colonial theft, violence, and broken promises, this remains indigenous land. It will always be indigenous land. Paleontology has a rich history at the University of Michigan, with origins around 1837 with a cabinet of natural history. Our holdings include specimens that were collected uh, in 1840 by the State Geological Survey. This was later, the unit was later reorganized into a museum, and the Museum of Paleontology was established in 1926. The unit is made up of curatorial faculty and staff that promote and care for the collections. As a research museum, we are affiliated with but are a separate operating entity from our public-facing Natural History Museum. There are three primary divisions of material, invertebrate, vertebrate, and botany, with the microfossils being folded into the invertebrate collection. At large, these specimens are housed at an off-campus facility with other natural history collections. One of the primary ways that we increase accessibility of our specimens is through the UM Online Repository of Fossils, or UMORPH, which is a custom-built platform developed in 2014 by Adam for hosting virtual specimens. The online viewing system includes features for research and teaching, such as a measurement tool, consistent anatomical orientations and orthographic views, and there are also features intended for more fun exploration, such as stereoscopic 3D using inexpensive red cyan glasses. UMORF also provides easy access to research-grade specimens and has been used to support publications in lieu of uh, loans in certain cases, and some specimens are downloadable. UMORF has also been used for K-12 and university teaching, for identification of backyard fossil finds, exhibits in other museums, and in support of news media stories. Over the past six years, we have an average site user count of just over 7,600 and around 35,000 page views annually. So I'm gonna navigate us to some trilobite specimens. The animals are currently organized taxonomically. So these are all of the trilobites that we have available in Umorph. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this nice enrolled one. You can see the specimen profile that has information such as taxonomy, locality, and other relevant information. Click on the specimen icon to get to the 3D viewer. There'll be a pop-up that has information on how to navigate within the viewer. Um, there's also measurement tools, so if you're interested in taking anatomical measurements, we scale our specimens so you're easily able to do this in the viewer. There are some additional camera views and positioning uh, possibilities up in the upper right-hand panel. If you want to see our terms of use, you can click the link at the bottom. So I'm going to just move around with the specimen. I can zoom in and out. I can turn it around any kind of which way that I want. It's really quite simple to manipulate the specimen in the viewer. The quality uh, is pretty high, high resolution images. We can also toggle the texture. So the, the way that we uh, collect the color is through vertex color, which is where we store the information rather than in texture maps. So that allows us to retain high resolution. So I'm also interested in taking a quick measurement. I just click the S key and the E key to start and end my measurement. Then you can see in the white bar in the upper left that the measurement has been recorded. So the points will retain on the specimen until I uh, clear them. And the way that you clear them is just through the escape key. And then you can go ahead and make another measurement. UMORF provides several other aspects of expanded education and educational opportunities on the website. The first being, say, exploratory learning. For example, we have the Bushing Mastodon, named for the family that found it in Fort Wayne, Indiana. 
The specimen was studied at UMMP, but was later donated to the Indiana State Museum. A mounted skeleton based on casts of individual bones was produced in fiberglass at UMMP and is still accessible for viewing at the University of Michigan Museum of Natural History. So I'll walk you through this viewer as well. This is the landing page for the Umorph Bone Picker, where you can also find links to specific elements of the animal and learn a bit more. The Bone Picker is a version of the interface that presents a full skeleton of a mastodon. Like the other viewer, the measurement and navigation controls are the same, uh, but there is an addition of a double click to open an element in a new window. So bones that are not recovered for this particular individual are kind of shaded a bit darker. Um, they were reconstructed from other similar animals. Hovering over a bone will cause its name to appear. Um, and then you can double click the bone for it to appear in a new window to examine this specific element in a bit more detail. So you can open multiple views of different pieces at the same time to facilitate easy comparison. Umorph is moving beyond simply hosting virtual specimens to also creating and curating content around specific organisms in the collection, such as Basilosaurus, an iconic ancient whale, and Hexagonaria, our state stone and common rugose coral. Most recently, Adam has added the capability to support much larger models in the Umorph viewer with hundreds of millions of points, allowing presentation of complex objects and diorama scenes with high fidelity. Such scenes can be annotated to provide context and opportunities for guided or exploratory learning. Prior to the deinstallation of exhibit space, a team of UMMP students and staff imaged the ancient life dioramas. Since then, the dioramas have been digitally reconstructed in three dimensions, and this summer a museum tech has been working to annotate these now virtual exhibits to include facts about the organisms, links to outside images, and incorporate our virtual specimens that are already on Umorph. Here's an Ordovician C. Basic navigation controls are the same, so we can easily rotate down with the right click and zoom into the scene with the mouse wheel. Since the viewer is slightly different, there are quite a few options in the left-hand menu. You can adjust the point cloud to improve resolution of the model. Um, there are a lot of different tools and preset options to view different angles of the model. One of the kind of most fun is to use the bird navigation to navigate through the scene. So you can click on the bird icon, adjust the speed at which you will move, um, kind of get you set yourself situated, and then use the WASD keys and your mouse to navigate through to different aspects of the scene. So here we can click on a clam, learn a little bit more about this extinct species, carry on our way. We're really interested in checking out this little trilobite, head through the crinoid stems, learn a little bit more, and then we can also click through to 3D model, which you'll recognize from before. So this gives viewers the opportunity to engage with artistic renditions of animals and also see what the actual specimens that we have in the collection look like. So heading back to our Ordovician C, you can kind of explore almost as if you are one of the sea creatures, um, seeing different aspects of the underwater life at this time. So we hope that you'll take some time to explore these dioramas and learn a little bit more about the ancient life. So the other primary aspect that I wanted to talk to you about today uh, is our local fossil organization or club, the Friends of the UN Museum of Paleontology. This is an organization of fossil collectors, enthusiasts, and specialists that were established in 1971 by Robert Kessling, a UMMP curator and former director. The club and its membership have donated countless fossils and have purchased specimens for display and scientific projects. They lead local field trips exploring the diverse ancient fauna of Michigan. They contribute and co-author peer-reviewed literature and guidebooks and three members have been recognized with prestigious national awards for their service to the field. I joined the Friends and the Museum in September of last year. Their monthly meetings have traditionally been hosted in museum classroom space. Since moving to a new, more secure collection facility, we're able to provide space in a larger demonstration room in the collection building. Now that we have gone entirely virtual, I host the meetings on our institutional Zoom account and secure guest researchers to speak to the group. This allows the members to interact with a variety of 
of professionals in a way that is not otherwise possible. I find this is particularly important for the youngest members ranging from 14 to 18 to be exposed to a variety of content and topics in a space that is inviting for them to ask questions. At the start of the new year, I established a volunteer program for the friends to come in for blocks of time during the week um, and help systematically move through the stratigraphic collection and document what's kind of in each of the drawers. Unfortunately, COVID-19 put this program on pause, but there are ample projects that they will assist with once it is safe to return to the facility, including helping unpack large loan returns and working through a backlog of donated material. I like to think of the Friends as ambassadors for the museum. They provide great service and opportunity to the local community. They have an interactive webpage, michiganbasinfossils.org, which has beautiful images of their personal fossil collections and interactive geologic map. They participate in Fossil ID Day with our Museum of Natural History, and we are working to get a YouTube series up and running on Michigan fossil finds, starting with the well-known Petoskey Stone. So we hope that you'll take some time to explore ancient Michigan with us, whether it's to dive into our virtual collection on Umorph, explore images and associated data, on the Michigan Basin Fossils website, or join the friends and participate in our monthly meetings, which are virtual for the foreseeable future. UMORPH will continue to update as we add virtual specimens and other educational projects that incorporate our models. With that, I would like to quickly thank the GSA organizers, specifically Nancy Wright, who fielded a lot of very technical emails from me early on, and the UMMP museum techs who transitioned to working on-site to remote work quite well and have worked hard generating virtual fossils and content this summer. There's a long list of people who have supported UMORF either with producing photogrammetric models, technical aspects, or helping to provide access to the dioramas before they were deinstalled. Funding for aspects of this work has been provided by the UMCRLT Faculty Development Fund and the UMMP. At this point, I'd be happy to field any questions or comments.